Okay, so recording is now on. And I'm going to, let's see, well, well, how about we work through the agenda, you and me together, and the, oh, and Fran is here. Great. Thank you, Fran. Thanks for joining. Hi, Fran. Hello. How are you doing? Okay, so here is what I've got for um, proposed proposed topics for the meeting, and let's let's. I, it seems like we've got a good presentation that Rishab has prepared. Let's talk through that. Yeah. Here we, we go. The image. Actually, maybe Rishab, would it be better yeah. if we have you drive the agenda? And we will we will coach and and encourage. Do you have a preference? I'm I'm used to when I schedule a meeting, I run the agenda. But typically, this may be better for you to run the agenda. You tell us what you want to do, and we'll let you guide us. Sure, sure. That that's a that's a good. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll start. So, uh, do you want me to start with the previous action items? What we've done now, or do you want me to start with my presentation? I uh, wanted to start with the presentation because I. Think that needs a lot of time on discussion as well. So I don't let's do waste let's go with the presentation. I think the action items we don't we don't need to review those. You, your meeting. Let's do presentation. I'm much more interested in it anyway. Yeah. So I'm sharing my screen now. So. Um, so I'm going to discuss my uh, strategy we implemented for the proposal. I uh, ran a little experiment on uh, benchmarking, and I did that for Git fetch. I chose that as a as a as a Git operation, and I used GMH as it was advised uh, in the project plan. So uh, what is GMH? GMH is a it is a J, uh, Java harness. It's used for building analyzing. Uh, micro benchmark benchmarks basically it's written in java and uh, there are two ways to run it standalone and uh, from from the ide so uh, for in their document in their documentation uh, the developers the jms developers they've said that they've recommended that we should use standalone as a, it as a standalone project because uh, they say that it's more reliable than uh, running it from an ide but uh, I think in the previous GSOC, uh, one of the student, they, uh, that person uh, implemented, integrated uh, JMH uh, in the Jenkins test harness. So right now, so for, for the project and for my for my experiment, I did both. I created a standalone project and I also ran it from the ID. I uh, created a module under uh, the test module in uh, the Git client plan uh, to run the experiment. And I'll, I'll, I'll be sharing the code shortly. So, so, so Rishab, Justin, for, yeah. do you want questions during or at the end? During, please, please interrupt me as much as you as much as you like. Yeah. So, so when you're saying standalone project or from IDE, I was assuming that was just the runtime. Whether I invoke the thing with a Maven command or some other command, or if I use my IDE click, and I could understand why it would be more reliable from a command line, no in, no interaction with the IDE, but but that seemed different than what you were describing with, yeah, you had created a pro a, a, inside the Maven project definition, I assume, and it just, it runs. So you can run it from a command line or from the IDE. Did I misunderstand something? I, I, I think that is a potential confusion I have because that when I read it, I assume that, that it means that I need to create a jar, a separate jar, and uh, and I need to run it from the command line. So I created a different project and I uh, imported the gate client dependencies. Maybe maybe I'm wrong uh, in this approach, but I did that when I'm running the experiment. Okay, good. Okay, so um, then uh, how to create a reliable benchmark? So this is something I uh, just one of the first things I had to learn is to trust the numbers which I received because it's very easy to have preconceived notions and then just uh, you know, get the numbers and uh, and think that yeah, maybe CLI gate is better than J gate. And I, I'll shortly show how uh, I was trapped in one of the ex uh, in one of the experiments I ran because I, I thought that the numbers would be JMH would be a reliable uh, framework. Yeah. 
so uh, some of the pitfalls i want to discuss before uh, explaining my strategy so first is that we discuss that we don't want any external network interference because uh, most of the gate operations they require an external connection and we want to isolate our benchmark from any kind of external interference uh, second is dead code elimination so uh, if i don't return any if i'm if i'm testing an operation i'm not returning anything in in that benchmark a jvm might optimize it and that might give us uh, this false uh, perception that our code is run, uh, the execute, it's it's running faster but uh, so we use this this concept of using a black hole gmh provides that it basically consume your object whatever you're returning and that tricks the jvm into thinking that there is there is an object which is being uh, returned from the function uh, and constant folding is basically when declaring constants and it replaces the calculation with the result so i don't want that as well so there's this another uh, another feature which jms provides for that and that is called a state static class i'll i'll describe that with the code i have so uh, configuring our benchmark so i'll, I'll uh, so there are things like benchmark mode warm up uh, before we run the test folks how many folks i want checks and i'm going to discuss i'm going to explain all that with my code so um, yeah so uh, if we want to integrate jmh inside our uh, project uh, we just we just have to add this dependency into our form and and then what i have to do is i have to create a runner class this is the runner class i have this basically what it does is i i can include my options i can add my options whatever i want however the parameters i want to run the benchmarks and also uh, if i i what i have to do is i just have to create a class i have to annotate it with jmh benchmark and this runner will identify uh, those classes and run the benchmarks so this is what the benchmark is for then uh, i'll uh, okay so the mode the mode is the first thing we'd like to discuss it's basically the benchmark mode is the performance we want so uh, if we see here we have throughput operations per unit time so we wanted execution time so it's basically inverse of that so i took average time per operation in milliseconds and we also have sample time single shot time and uh, we can test each of the performance metrics as well all include that as well uh then warm up iterations how uh, how many times do we want to warm up our jvm before we run the benchmark test uh the default is suggested 5 so i use 5 then measurement iterations is how many times i want to run my benchmark that is all that is also a default number i choose i time unit the performance metric in which unit i want and it was milliseconds i chose that threads i was not too sure because uh, actually i'm not very uh, confident uh, if there is a connection between the git operations and uh, parallel programming i'm not sure if Uh, i'm actually not well versed with that concept so i i used to but uh, i think that's that's something i need to learn before doing uh, this study so yeah and folks i used to but they uh, they recommend to use uh, as many folks as you can maybe five basically jvm child processes you want and uh, so when i run a benchmark a test i have created so it's it's called a trial so what happens is if i have two folks it's going to test it it's going to first run it in uh, in the jvm and then it's going to another create another jvm and going to run another trial on that separate jvm and uh, and uh, and from the documentation they've said that uh, uh, the as as much as we increase the folks it is going to increase the precision of our results that's what they've said i i couldn't test it with five folks because uh, practically in my local machine running the benchmark it it takes almost 30 minutes to do that which is also uh, i think it's a, it's a concern and uh, the result i wanted in the format of json that's uh, that's yeah so uh, now i'll show one of the benchmarks i've written and uh, then if if you guys want like the results as well so the first thing is the state i was talking about this is basically jmh handling uh, all the uh, all the arguments or the objects you want for your operations to run so it's going to uh, instantiate and it's going to handle the instantiation and sharing of the objects 
So you don't want to uh, declare objects and instantiate them in your benchmark because you want just you want to isolate your operation uh, inside the benchmark. So uh, we declare whatever uh, uh, variables we want to in this state, and then we can pass this state uh, the objects uh, as an argument in inside the benchmark uh, method. So I par parameterize this test because we have two implementations, git, CLI git, and j git. And I also, I, uh, my uh, strategy was to test it with a, uh, with a variable size of repository. So I chose four repositories and uh, the sizes which I have uh, chosen, I can, I think I have a visual, uh, I have a, yeah. So the sizes are, uh, 0 0.034 MB, then there's a four, almost five MB uh, repository, and it's 93, and then it's 324. So I wanted to test it like this. And um, then I, I had to create a, 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 temp, a, a utility which would create a local Git repository for the lifetime of the benchmark. And uh, for that, I shamelessly, I copied uh, the temporary folder J unit rule. I just Remove the JUnit rule. I changed it to folder for benchmark. So I, I didn't change a lot of things there, and uh, I've used that to uh, to create a local Git repository. Now, uh, after that, so what I have here is uh, is basically before and after, just as we have in JUnit. So, uh, so the level, what it means is that for each iteration of the benchmark, it is going to set these things up and then it's going to basically uh, tear them down that is what is going to happen when i and this is the scope we are mentioning here uh, this could be uh, the levels we can share we can set our translation and invocation so what i wanted was for each iteration i want a new local git repository that is what i want and i run five iterations in just one trial so I wouldn't want to share my repository space in the whole for the whole trial, right? That is why I chose uh, the scope iteration. And um, so what I'm doing is I'm uh, and also the repository URLs I've chosen. It's basically the local uh, the, the local Git repositories, so that we we're not we're not uh, connecting to a remote repository uh, through via an external connection. So this makes sure that our uh, benchmark is truly isolated. And um, so the ref specs, I have basically fetched all the branches right now. And I initialized, I also put, uh, as soon as I, I, I created the client, I initialized the repository before, uh, before performing git fetch. And this was done uh, before, before the benchmark so that this doesn't get included in the benchmark I want to test. Now, um, benchmark is pretty simple. I have basically, I have, I have the Jenkins state. I have a black hole, which basically consumes the object I've created here so that the JVM doesn't optimize it and reduces the time and I have any unintended results I don't want. Uh, so the fetch command, it's pretty simple. It's, the, it's what we do and I execute it and I then consume the fetch object, fetch command object, which it returns. So, um, bef and I also created another class called uh, fetch vanilla benchmark, which was basically uh, making the same thing, but with system dot nano time to see uh, how JMH is uh, working on the benchmarks and how much difference do we have in time and how accurate nano time is. So you want to casually benchmark operations is nano time a good option or not. That's also, I think I wanted to see. So um, I'll, I'll show the results I, I had for git fetch. These are the results I had for uh, git vanilla benchmark, which basically means perform uh, benchmarking them with system nano time. So here you can see that C with, between CLI git and J git, J git is performing, is, is execute, execution time is, is slower than git, CLI git for every, for any kind of repository size I take. And uh, then I did the same Even, thing with JMH. Yeah. Okay, that, that one surprises me because even on the micro-sized repository, it was 300 kilobytes, right? The, 
the repo one yeah. is is yeah. tiny it's it's very very small and yet yeah. in that one still your measurement showed that jgit was slower and substantially slower interesting yeah. okay continue so then i used the jmi performance benchmark and uh, the anomalous behavior i saw here was that jgit was performing better than cli git for uh, repository size less than 5 mb if i had one for 300 kb and one for almost 5 mb so uh, this was something i wanted to test because i was not sh i had no idea why would this happen so to check why would this happen i i tried one more thing i the, the only suspicion i had was that uh, maybe because jvm is warming up jgit might perform better because of that but i was not sure uh, that that assumption is right or not so i tried another thing jmh uh, it gives us uh, a different benchmark mode called single shot mode where we run the benchmark test without warming up the jvm so i wanted to see if i wanted to confirm that jgit is performing better than git because jvm is warmed enough so it was it was correct the assumption was correct because here you can see without the warm up jgit is still slower so um, so this was one of the op uh, observations i i had uh, from the experiment i ran here and um, and yeah this this is the strategy strategy i chose to um, to benchmark git operations and i think this is this is it i am if you'd like to ask questions about the code the methodology or anything and uh, yeah and i also i have some questions in the questions for discussion uh, in the design document but uh, i i would want to discuss that after you if you have some questions feedback or anything for the for the for this presentation then if if there's none then i would like to proceed with the de design document okay so uh justin any from you or fran from you I think it kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, I kind of had the same uh, same thing he said, uh, Mark. So it's kind of surprised, but I think that what you said about the cold versus warm JVM maybe kind of like enlightens some things too. So, Rishab, one of the one of the places of concern for me was around platform specific um, issues like the potential for a, a substantially increased fork cost on Windows compared to Linux. Were your, was your platform that you ran the benchmarks on a Linux platform or a Windows platform? Linux, Linux platform. Okay, Not good, all right. So that, that we know that you're using native, the platform that is native for Git, so that is good. All right, just knowing which one that is, that's a good choice. I've got plenty of Windows access from myself so i could run i could run conceivably these kinds of tests and see how it do you have access to a windows machine at all or is your your only machine that you've got access to a, a linux computer uh no i don't have access to a windows machine okay so the project would need yeah. to provide you access to one on on yeah. amazon or something like that good all right good to know Maybe, thank yeah. you yeah and actually that, that's a good point and perhaps like so he's on mac uh, perhaps it would be good to benchmark against Linux and Windows too. Well, no, no, uh, Rishab, I think Mac you said Linux. I, Rishab, I think you said you're on Linux, right? Not Mac. I am on Linux. No, I am on Mac. I just. I oh, you are on Mac. Mac. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, you, so you're you're okay. Good. You're on a, a Unix variant, uh, BSD like. Good. Okay. Interesting. All right. Very good. So, so it, it's also an important place. Excellent. Thanks. Okay, so um, the first thing I I think I sh we should discuss wanted for JMH. Because the first question I had was re regarding the creation of the test environment, the machine to work upon. Is it going to be provisioned by Jenkins infrastructure or infra or not? That is that is something I wanted to discuss. And um, yeah, that's the first thing I wanted to discuss. So. Uh, so I think the right now the strategy would be to test this to test my benchmarks with my local machine, right? 
Correct. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, I think Quakers. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, sure, sure. Please, please, Justin. No, I was just going to say, like, uh, to like take the other variables out of like anything else running on your machine and stuff like that, perhaps like, like uh, more final benchmarks. You know, if we're going to have remote Windows or remote Linux, maybe, I guess maybe not a remote Mac, but <laughs> that's going to be a little harder because of the licensing stuff. But uh, it would be nice to run on clean machines for like the Linux and Mac benchmark, or Linux and Windows benchmarks at least. Um, Yes. Okay. Okay. So the I second. Jenkins uh, Infra has yeah. both of those. I think Jenkins Infra has both of those, right, Mark? Both of which. Sorry, Justin, I missed that. Oh no, uh, I think uh, Jenkins Infra has Windows and Linux variant. Yes. Yes. yes absolutely. Windows. What and well and and even better. To good good point, Rishab. May, we may want to give you. Yeah, why don't we? That's a that's a very good idea, Justin. I think we should answer question number one, Rishab, by having you submit pull requests to the Git client plugin or Git plugin, whichever one is is the more crucial for your your benchmarks, which provide which actually execute the tests in the multiple environments because the the executors on Jen ci.jenkins.io right now are single single executor per uh, agent. Therefore, we don't have collisions with other agents. Now, they are, they are still virtual machines. You don't get access to a physical machine, so the variability is still probably quite high. But having you be able to use that environment would avoid you having to get a local Linux computer or get a local Windows computer. Instead, you could use ci.jenkins.io. We admit that it's wildly variable. And we accept that variability as part of the exploration and the learning that you're doing. Sure, okay, I, I can do that. Friend, so, so I basically, yeah. yeah Fran, I was just going to check with Fran. Does that seem reasonable to you, Fran? I'm just thinking about how the, the infrastructure might help this so that we don't have to put him on separate machines. Let's use ci.jenkins.io. No, yes, I think, I think it makes total sense. Okay, great. So, so Rishab, I think we've got an answer on number one. And the answer is a good thing to do during this community bonding period because you've already submitted pull requests, but this is a different kind of pull request, right? Because the current pull requests are running in running JUnit tests. JMH is not quite JUnit, right? It's a different thing. And so That's you'll have to figure out some infrastructure and how to make it work differently so th this will be a very interesting thing and community bonding is a perfect time to do it sure i'll, I'll work on that okay are the uh are the jenkins agents uh for ci jenkins io is that i think you said this but i just wanted to confirm uh those are are those warm vms and then it's one vm per agent they they are they are tragically long-lived agents and therefore, they are not just warmed, they are at times stale and overheated. So yes, okay. they are, <laughs> they, there is a facility which you could use and uh, the Azure, Azure Container Infrastructure, ACI, which would give him absolutely non-preheated, but that's not the default, and that's certainly not what the Git, the, the Git project uses. The Git projects use the, the, the stable, uh, they, they stay for a long time. I have to clean their disk space periodically, all sorts of challenges. Mm, okay. <laughs> Good times. Uh, I figured that, and, uh, you know, that, that happens in the real world, too. So. Right, right. It, it's, I mean, it's, that is the real world. Well, and, and it is, Rishab, you should not publish results from ci.jenkins.io is definitive, right? We would certainly be better off ultimately before we get to results that we run it in an environment where we have better control than, than those wildly variable agents. But those agents can give us comparative numbers to help guide your, your development and your shaping of the, of the tests. Okay. Got it. Okay, so uh, the next thing I wanted to discuss was uh, how would we choose operations that we want to test? Like right now, I, I just thought that 
operations which involve network or io operations i would i would test them but do we want to make a start do you want to make do you want to prioritize operations in a in some way or do we just want to list out the operations we have which in which we use in our plugin and then just uh test them bench them how would we go about it so i i think we absolutely should prioritize them at least for me i think there are enough operations some of them are corner case operations which is probably not relevant how long it takes for instance there is an operation in the plugin that will per- apply a tag and we can predictably say we just don't care how long that operation takes it's not going to, to to dramatically affect one thing or the other it is done so infrequently whereas fetch or checkout we do all the time and therefore is quite important okay um now another one i would uh, for me i would put top of my list i would suggest and and maybe we should propose a, a process you use to choose the things and bring a recommendation to us it might be that what you do is look at or instrument the the get client to to give you a report of counts which things got called how often and then we put that instrumented thing into an environment where it's it's used uh, i'm happy to run it in my environment for instance with 1000 plus jenkins jobs and i could then give you counts which say hey the here is the here are the counts of which which methods were called at what ratio okay that that's that's going to be great because i i tried profiling and i was not sure how much reliable it is in my machine and i did i did receive git init and git fetch as one of the most used operations and and that's those are predictable absolutely yeah. the question for me would be is git ls remote a high a high profile one because of its use in scanning for brand, multi branch repositories its use in detecting changes fet fetch and it and ls remote were the three on my list of oh probably those and those likely already are 80 or 90% of the benefit if you find a way to improve fetch you've already done dramatic improvements okay great okay so uh and the, okay so, yeah the size of uh, the parameters we want to use to test the operation size of repository is an obvious one then we have different operating platforms and yeah so uh, windows yeah. linux and mac i think you you made a you've the fact that you've got a mac is a good benefit because mm-hmm. i don't have convenient access to a mac so i would include mac in your list okay I'm a I'm a free BSD type I have but it is not not nearly big enough to put on this list for the Jenkins community. Okay. So after that okay I've I've shown the presentation and then ha huh, the one of the one of the major discussion topic I had in my mind was how are we going to use JMH if we integrated in our it as a test module it takes considerable time why first of all why would you want it after we benchmark it for once in different environments and we have consolidated results why would we want to integrate this module inside git client plugin well so for me i would want it integrated because i love having the results now but i want to know if new versions of command line git change the characteristic or new version new platforms change the characteristic so for example the platform sig is evaluating power pc 64 bit linux and evaluating ibm system 393370 x no system 390x at uh, those two are places where this would help or in my environment i may want to run it on freebsd but but i don't think we want to run it every time on ci.jenkins.io but i think we we at least for me i would prefer it be readily available so anyone could run it anytime they wish comments from from other mentors yeah i think that sounds like a good approach yeah i agree okay 
So now, okay. Rishabh, we would have an additional optional stage in the Jenkins file to run this. How would we? And it was like for unit tests, that's something which is not optional, right? We we run it with the code, with right? The yeah. So mm -hmm. so my thought was either make it optional in the Jenkins file, or make it a purely a command line thing that I could then extend the Jenkins file myself privately on a private fork to invoke that. But having it available in the Jenkins file would be very elegant if you can do it. So oh, and in okay. fact. There is, a, there is a history of doing that, Rishab. If you would like to refer to someone else's work who had done that, um, in the Git plugin, Jenkins file history, you will find, so in the, in the history in Git of the Jenkins file, you will find code that was added to run the platform, the, oh dear, plugin compatibility tester and the acceptance test harness. Um, I turned them off because they were too heavyweight and I finally deleted them, but they are there and they give you an example of how to do it. Just look in the, the Git log for the exact Jen file Jenkins file and it will show you when I, when I made that change and you can then use that as a pattern. Sure, I'll, I'll do that. Okay. Now, I apologize. Obviously, it feels like I made a mistake here. I only allowed 30 minutes for this. I suspect we need an hour. Um, the other proposal was we would like to meet as much as twice a week to be sure that Rishab gets feedback. Um, Fran, Justin, is there a time? Would you, I'll send you a, a doodle poll to see if we could get each other connected for a, a, another time during the week. That work. Okay. Yeah, so I think you're proposing do two half hour sessions in the right. week. With, uh, yeah, this. So, Rishab, do you have enough yeah. to continue making progress until the next time we meet? We will for sure meet one week from today, and I'll propose an additional meeting sometime between that based on the doodle poll. I think uh, what I can work on is the first thing is uh, adding things to the design document because I've just added the benchmark strategy. I haven't uh, added things related to uh, the uh, the fixes, performance fixes we wanted to do, the already existing bugs we have, particularly redundant fetch. And the second thing is maybe we I can uh, test another gate operation. I can try to test it, maybe check out. I can try that. So, uh, yeah, and or maybe we could discuss the implementation, uh, the way I want to include performance improvement inside the plugin. Maybe we could discuss that in the next meeting as well. Great. Now, would you also be willing to share, give a five minute brief summary, and it really it will have to be very brief, high level, to the platform special interest group a week from tomorrow? So the platform special interest group will meet a week from, yeah, next, it'll be the 17th, no, you know the date. I think I'd shared it with you. I'll send you an, 21st, an invite. 21st, right, 21st. Would that be okay for you? Yeah, that is okay, but I just wanted to know what exactly, uh, do I have to summarize what we we want to do or do I have to uh, describe the benchmarking strategy? What particularly are we looking for? You, you choose what you think would be interesting to the people in the platform SIG. The, this is a chance to do a status report to a group of people who, let's see, one of the people there is from IBM, another one is from Broadcom, and, and these are people who think about platforms all the time. And so you just presenting, hey, we're trying this, we're doing this benchmarking technique will cause them to be, oh, what about this and what about that? It'll be a good dialogue. Sure, sure, I'll, I'll do it. Definitely. Okay. So I'll, I'll add whatever we've discussed and whatever the tasks I have for the agenda for the next meeting. And uh, there was things which we, uh, so identify progressive milestones for the project plan. So right now, when I when I created the proposal, I, I had the key deliverables. I just wanted to discuss, we can discuss it next time. The, the things I 
mentioned as stretch goals to where do we want to shift them into the key deliverables we were trying to achieve so that's something after which i can identify the pro progressive milestones correctly yeah right and i i think progressive milestones is a good thing to happen during this community bonding phase and we got two more weeks at least in community bonding during this phase so this yeah. that let's let's keep making progress there okay sure i, th I think this is this is it is there anything else you want to discuss i'll update the meeting notes excellent thank you so i'll send the, the google the, or the doodle poll and we'll okay. plan to meet again we will between now and next wednesday i'll try to find another time when we could meet for 30 minutes you'll keep going on on the evaluation on the document on the design document and get yourself ready for a presentation of the platform sig as well okay sure all right okay excellent so, uh, so I will I will post a, a copy of the recording because it helps people know how we're going. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Good work. Thanks. Excellent work, Rishab. Thanks. Excellent work.